good morning students welcome In this class we are going to discuss protein folding algorithm and stressor prediction protein folding is the most complicated and still it is considered as a mystery but identification of the shape of this protein folding is important because the shape determines the function of the protein the advancements in the field of chemistry physics biology bioinformatics etc enables us to predict the protein structure to a certain extent we have studied that the structure of protein can be explained as primary structure secondary structure tertiary structure and quaternary structure primary structure is as the sequence of amino acid then secondary structure in the form of alpha helix and beta helix mostly tertiary structure is the overall three dimensional shape of polypeptide chain tertiary structure is the active form of complex of two or more polypeptide units then quaternary structure occurs when multiple polypeptide associate to form a functional protein as well as the protein to protein contacts that can occur in multi enzyme complexes in this class we are going to discuss an algorithm for protein folding we are going to discuss chow fassman algorithm and this chow fassman method takes a straightforward statistical approach for the prediction of the secondary structure that is alpha helix and beta helix will be predicted using this chow's fassman method before learning in detail about the algorithm let us quickly revise the structure of alpha helix and beta sheet the polypeptide chain begins to assume local 3d conformations of amino acids that are in close proximity with each other in their linear sequence secondary structure includes alpha helices and beta sheets secondary structure specifically involves interactions between residues that are near each other along the polypeptide sequence beta sheets are the most prominent secondary structures in promin in proteins because they are most stable amino and carboxy groups of amino acid residues forms the backbone of the polypeptide chain which form hydrogen bonds to create secondary structure hydrogen bonds are formed in the presence of two electronegative atoms where one of the atoms has a hydrogen attached to it and the other has a lone pair of electrons the nitrogen atom acts as a hydrogen donor since it has the hydrogen atom attached to it the oxygen atom act as the hydrogen bond acceptor since hydrogen bond is created with this atom the carboxyl group on one amino acid forms a hydrogen bond with the amino group of the amino acid four residues down the chain this form of hydrogen bonding gives alpha helices their structure and shape thus i plus 4 gives the next i hydrogen bonding 
that is the amino acid 1 is hydrogen bonded to amino acid 4 amino acid 2 is hydrogen bonded to amino acid 5 etc in an alpha helix of all amino acids side chain face the outside of the helix because this is the most energetically stable arrangements arrangement now let us discuss the distance between turns the distance between turns in the alpha helix is called the pitch and is 3.6 amino acid residues and measures 5.4 angstroms each amino acid in the helix rotates it 100 degrees so to complete a full form of that is 360 degree 3.6 amino acids must be present so in an alpha helix with 10 turns 36 amino acids exist favorable amino acids in alpha helices include m methionine a alanine r arginine K lysine and L leucine. The side chains of these amino acids are relatively small and relatively simple, which would prevent the happening of the steric clashes, that is, due to the unnatural overlap of any two non bonding atoms in the protein structure steric clashes can occur so this arrangement of these types of amino acids prevent steric clashes there are some unfavorable amino acids in alpha helices they become unfavorable because of the large size or because of the ionic charge nature or because of the shape of the side chains which can destabilize the helix shape the type of amino acids which are unfavorable are proline glycine serine aspartate asparagine theronine valine and isoleucine here the proline and glycine is considered as helix breaker because helix breaker has so many angles of rotations it cannot form ring structure proline does not allow for 100 degree rotation normally proline is found at the beginning or end of the helices because proline is a good amino acid to begin an alpha helix because of the rigidity of its structure another secondary structure of protein is beta sheet beta pleated sheets forms as a result of hydrogen bonding between polypeptide chains in this figure dotted blue lines shows the hydrogen bond among the peptide sequences generally prediction of beta strand is more difficult than alpha helix three beta plated sheets are shown in this figure here beta hairpin is formed and two anti parallel strands are linked by a short loop of two to five residues 
normally this kind of turn or beta bulge loop happens because of the presence of glycine or a proline and this anti parallel strands are formed as shown in this figure let us understand few more details about turns and loops region in the beta sheet loop regions typically connect different combination of secondary structures and they may be flexible allowing conformational change in protein they can form hydrogen bond with water molecule loops that connect two adjacent anti parallel beta strands are called hairpin loops or reverse turns such loops leads to the reversal of direction of peptide polypeptide chain these turns facilitate the folding of a protein into a compact structure by reversing chain direction into a central region when we discuss the secondary structure of protein in a in addition to alpha helix and beta plated sheets another possibility is random coils among the sequence of amino acids this random coil structure do not help us to a consistent secondary structure or sometimes it disrupt the alpha helix or beta sheet shape these coils forms due to the electrostatic repulsion we are going to understand the protein folding structure prediction of secondary structure chow fasman proposed a algorithm in 1978 to predict the structure of protein the chow fasman method takes a straight forward statistical approach to predicting secondary structure each amino acid is assigned several conformational parameters pa pb and p turn these parameters representing the propensity of each amino acid to participate in alpha helices beta sheets and beta turns respectively and were determined based on observed frequencies in a set of sample proteins of known structure another name of conformational parameter pa pb and p turn is preference parameter a table of prediction value or parameter preference parameter for each of 20 amino acid in alpha helix beta plate and turn already calculated and standardized to obtain the prediction value the frequency of amino acids in the structure is divided by all the residues in the frequent in, in the proteins so the propensity values pa pb and p turn indicate the strength of each amino acid to become either alpha or beta or turn in the residue in addition each amino acid is assigned four turn parameters f of i f of i plus 1 f of i plus 2 and f of i plus 3 corresponding to the frequency with which the amino acid was observed in the first second third or fourth position of hairpin turn the resulting table of chow fasman parameters is shown in this table for 20 common amino acids
ഫോർ ഈച്ച് റീജിയൻ എക്സ്റ്റൻഡ് ഇൻ പാർട്ട് ബി കമ്പ്യൂട്ട് സിഗ്മ പി എ ആൻഡ് സം ഓഫ് പി എ വാല്യൂസ് ഫോർ ഈച്ച് റെസിഡ്യൂ ഇൻ ദ റീജിയൻ ആൻഡ് സിഗ്മ പി ബി ഇഫ് ദ റീജിയൻ ഈസ് ഗ്രേറ്റർ ദാൻ ഫൈവ് റെസിഡ്യൂസ് ഇൻ ലെങ്ത് ആൻഡ് സിഗ്മ പി എ ഈസ് ഗ്രേറ്റർ ദാൻ സിഗ്മ പി ബി ദെൻ ദ റീജിയൻ ഈസ് പ്രിഡിക്റ്റഡ് ടു ബി ആൽഫാ ഹെലിക്സ് Now step 2 is the identification of beta sheets using the same algorithm as in step 1. Here instead of P of A, we are considering P of B. Because P of B indicates beta sheets. Conformational parameter PB. So in step 2, A is find all regions where 4, 6 contiguous amino acid residues have P of B greater than 100. B in step 2, each region identified in part A extend the region in both directions until a set of 4 contiguous residues with P of B less than 100 is encountered. Then C in step 2, that is for each region extended in part B. compute sigma p of b if average p of b over all residues in the region is greater than 100 and sigma p of b greater than sigma p of a then the region is predicted to be a beta sheet since we are scanning the window and identify the regions of six contiguous residue there is a possibility of overlap of beta strand and alpha helix with step 1 and step 2 step 3 is an effort to solve this overlapping problem so step 3 if any of the helices assigned in step 1 overlap a beta strand assigned in step 2 then the overlapping region is pred predicted to be helix if sigma p of a is greater than sigma p of b and if sigma p of b is greater than sigma p of a then it is a strand now in chow fasman parameters table you have seen f of i f of i plus 1 f of i plus 2 f of i plus 3 values these are to calculate the turn of beta sheets so step 4 identify beta turns for each residue i calculate the turn propensity p of t that is p of t is calculated as p of t is equal to the f of i of the residue i plus f of i plus 1 value of the following residue plus f of i plus 2 value of the subsequent residue that is the position of i plus 2 plus f of i plus 3 of the residue at position i plus 3 thus we calculate the propensity value p of t then in step 4 b part is we have to predict the hairpin turn starting at each position i that meets the following criteria 1 p of t is greater than 0.000075 to the average p turn value for the four residue at position i through i plus 3 is greater than 100 and then sum of p of a is less than sigma p of turn greater than sigma p of b over the four residues in positions i through i plus 3 this is chow fasman algorithm using the statistical approach accuracy of 
Chow Fassman algorithm is between 50 percentage to approximately 60 percentage. So as mentioned, the breaking elements amino acids plays important role in the structure prediction. Helix breaking amino acids include proline and glycine. Beta sheet breaking amino acids include proline, asparagine, glutamine. This screen represents the output of Chow Fassman algorithm. Amino acid sequence is given. Then the secondary structure is predicted with C, the variable C, H and E. C represents the coils, H represents alpha helix shape and E represents beta strands. GOR is another statistical method to predict secondary structure of amino acids of proteins. It is an improved method on Chow Fassman method. It assumes amino acids surrounding the central amino acid influences secondary structure central amino acid is likely to adopt. The scoring matrices used in GOR method incorporates information theory and Bayesian statistics. Gore predicts secondary structure based on a window of 17 residues. For each residue in the sequence, 8 N-terminal and 8 C-terminal positions are considered along with the central residue. As with the Chow Fassman method, a collection of some a collection of sample proteins of known secondary structure was analyzed and the frequencies with which each amino acid occupied each of the 17 window positions in the helices, sheets and turns was calculated yielding a 17 by 20 scoring matrix. The values in this matrix are used to calculate the probability that each residue in a target sequence will be involved in a helix sheet or turn. The accuracy of Gore method is about 65 percentage.